In this video, we're going to talk about summing amplifiers, one of the most useful applications of op amps. Let's start with a simple example. Imagine you've got three containers of water, each at a different temperature. Now, suppose you want to measure the total combined temperature automatically, in real time. How would you do that? The first step is straightforward. Place a temperature sensor in each container. Each sensor outputs a voltage that's proportional to the water's temperature. But here's the challenge. How do we add up those three voltages? Sure, you could use an Arduino, write some code, and let it do the math. But honestly, that's a bit of overkill. Using a microcontroller for a job this simple is like bringing a bulldozer just to plant a flower. It'll work, but most of the power is wasted. Instead, there's a cleaner solution, a summing amplifier. All you need is a basic op-amp chip and a few resistors. That's it. No software, no debugging, no maintenance. Just a robust little hardware circuit you can build for under a dollar. And if you're brand new to op-amps, I recommend checking out our introduction video first. It shows how these chips make analog computing surprisingly easy. But for now, let's do a quick refresher. Unlike a resistor, a capacitor, or even a transistor, an op-amp isn't just a single component. It's actually an entire circuit made of those building blocks, all tucked neatly inside one tiny chip. That's why they're sold as ICs, integrated circuits. The real power of an op-amp comes from how you wire it up. With just a few resistors, you can make a circuit that does actual math using voltages. You can add, subtract, scale, integrate, differentiate, and that's only scratching the surface. In this video, we'll zero in on one of the simplest and most practical tricks, using an op-amp to add voltages together. And if you're curious about what else they can do, check out our playlist. We've got plenty more examples of how these little chips keep showing off. Op amps are usually used in two ways, open loop or closed loop. In open loop, there's no feedback, so the gain is massive, hundreds of thousands or more. That's why it's mostly used in comparators, where the only job is to tell which input is higher. We've got a full video on those, links in the description. Most real circuits use closed loop with negative feedback through resistors. This feedback tames the huge gain, keeps things stable, and makes the op-amp behave in a nice, linear way. Closed loop designs are the backbone of op-amp circuits. Inverting, non-inverting, summers, difference amps, integrators, differentiators, you name it. And today, we'll be building our summing amplifier in closed loop mode. Before we jump into applications, there are two golden rules for analyzing op-amps with negative feedback. They come straight from the ideal op-amp model and make life a lot easier. Rule one, no current flows into the input terminals. An ideal op-amp has infinite input resistance. Rule two, with negative feedback, the voltages at the inverting and non-inverting inputs are equal. The op-amp constantly adjusts its output to keep their difference essentially zero. These rules only apply when negative feedback is present, but when it is, they make predicting the circuit's behavior surprisingly simple. All right, that's enough of the intro. Now that we've covered the basics, let's dive into the summing amplifier itself. The good news? It's surprisingly easy to build. All you need is an op amp chip. Power it up, connect a feedback resistor from the output to the inverting input, and tie the non-inverting input to ground. Next, feed each signal you want to add into the inverting input through its own resistor. That's the whole circuit. The output voltage ends up being a weighted sum of the inputs. And don't worry about that weighted term. If all the resistors are equal, the output is simply the negative of the sum of your input voltages. And the best part? You're not limited to just three signals. You can keep adding more inputs as long as you've got room for resistors. Sounds a little too simple, right? Let's prove it by walking through the fundamentals. We'll strip away the fluff and keep only what matters. In the schematic, we won't draw the dual power rails to keep things clean, but remember, they're there in the real circuit. What we do show is this, a feedback resistor from the output to the inverting input, the non-inverting input tied to ground, and each input voltage connected to the inverting input through its own resistor. That's the classic inverting summing amplifier in its simplest form. 
Let's give the math a clean landing pad by labeling everything. Call the three input voltages V1, V2, and V3. The output will be V out. The non-inverting input is tied to ground, so it sits at zero volts. The inverting input is our mystery node. Let's call its voltage V4. That's the summing node we're about to analyze. Now for currents. Through the three input resistors, define currents I1, I2, and I3, each flowing from its source toward the inverting node. The tiny currents that would flow into the op-amp pins are I4 for the inverting input and I5 for the non-inverting input. And for the feedback path, we'll call the current through RF I6, flowing from the inverting node toward the output. Great, everything's labeled. Now we can run the analysis in a few crisp steps. Because this circuit uses negative feedback, the golden rules apply. Rule 1, no current flows in to the op-amp inputs. So I4 equals 0 amps, and I5 equals 0 amps. That means the currents through R1, R2, and R3 have nowhere else to go. They must flow through the feedback path RF. In other words, I6 equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. That's our first equation. Rule 2, with negative feedback, the op-amp drives its output so the inverting and non-inverting inputs sit at the same voltage. The non-inverting input is at ground, so both inputs are effectively at zero volts. That makes the inverting node voltage, V4, equal to zero volts, a virtual ground. That's our second equation. With those two rules in place, we can turn currents into voltages with Ohm's law and see exactly how the output responds to the inputs. Let's start with our first relationship. I6 equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. Keep an eye on these currents. I1, I2, and I3 flow through R1, R2, and R3 respectively. By Ohm's law, each current is the voltage across its resistor divided by that resistor. Using Ohm's law, we can express all the currents in terms of voltages and resistances. Now substitute those into our equation and we get our third relationship. It looks a little messy at first, but don't worry, golden rule number two saves the day. Since the inverting node V4 is at virtual ground, that means V4 is zero volts. Suddenly, all those terms simplify nicely. What we're left with is an expression showing that the output voltage is a weighted sum of the inputs with the weights set by the resistor ratios. That's the equation for the summing amplifier, and it works no matter how many inputs you add. Let's make it concrete with a quick example. Suppose we only have two inputs, V1 and V2. In that case, the output equation shrinks down to just two terms. And if all the resistors are equal, the weights cancel out, leaving us with something simple. The output is just the negative of V1 plus V2. And that's it, the heart of the summing amplifier. A simple little circuit that adds voltages together in real time. No code, no clocks, just physics doing the math. If you want to dive deeper, check out our full op-amp playlist. I'll also be uploading some exam-focused problem walkthroughs soon. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more fun and practical electronics videos.